Let's play this clip of Jacob, uh, is it Frey or Fry? Fry. He is the uh, mayor of uh, Minneapolis. And mm -hmm. um, ooh, I don't know if he meant to say this or if he didn't really understand what the point of a minimum wage is. I think he had it slip out, right? I mean, I think that this is um a bit of a, a, the, a kind of thing where this is supposed to go unsaid but if you look uh, i guess i don't i'm not familiar obviously with the minneapolis uh, uh, city council here but i saw uh, people point out that this uh, council member vita she you know gets excited but then watch her expressions i guess and on the left are pretty say, animated vita sucks she's somebody who co-signs a lot of what fry does but the rest of the council like or there's a majority of the council that voted for the uber thing and yeah fry is a neoliberal plant and now we're seeing the face uh, that faces uh sort of finance people and funders and the rich and yes present this stuff to the public and it doesn't go well um oh i'm that's what it is i'm looking at the wrong uh sheet I'm like look and this isn't number 13. here it is sorry okay yeah and just the, the and just to catch people up on on what's going on in uh, minneapolis there was um a minimum wage ordinance uh passed for uh you know uber and lyft and i don't know if there's any other ride share stuff out there um and the last I heard, Uber and Lyft were, th were threatening to leave. And the uh, drivers there were like, okay, we're going to build our own app, mm. which so far so good as far as I'm concerned. I yeah. mean, uh, there was, there's been attempts to do that, I know, in New York. And I think there was one that was around for a while. But, you know, Uber and Lyft have a lot more money for marketing. But if you're the only game in town, that's going to help you uh, quite a bit. So, you know, this is a, a positive, it seems to me. But here's a Jacob Fry, who is very worried about this minimum wage um, thing. We also need to consider the precedent that's being set here, which should not go overlooked entirely. Uh, and I'll just ask the rhetorical question of, are we now planning on setting a minimum wage for every industry that comes forward? Are we setting a new wage uh, with expenses for all tech workers, uh, for workers in the fast food industry, et cetera? Uh, we have to all be right, looking I'm sorry. at the consequences. I, I added that applause. we got to go back because... I, I think there's a lot of people like, like yeah, I can see that woman on the end there. In the, in She's the, just like, in the what did he just say? Yeah. So watch that woman on the left side of your screen, because, um, you know, one of the points of having a minimum wage is to raise wages for everybody. Yep. Um, and I don't think he seems to pick it up. And, and again, I mean, we could go through this. I could say this till I'm blue in the face. If we were to have maintained the relationship between the minimum wage and productivity from 25 years ago, when the last time the minimum wage was raised, was it 25 years ago or is it even uh, longer at this point? Federal minimum wage. The minimum wage would be closer to like 25 to $30 an hour. And in fact, that, that statistic is old. It may even be higher now. Um, if we just maintain the minimum wage relative to inflation, it would be closer to like 20 years. Yeah. Um, I guess it was 15 years ago, but, I, but if you go back to like 25, 30 years ago in terms of where it was, I mean, the uh, workers have been losing. And these specific workers, rideshare workers, the, the sort of raise brought them up and they never say the actual rate that they're paying, but brought them up to minimum wage calculated based on not only the time where they have drive or er, uh, uh, riders in the car, but when they're waiting for a car, uh, like well, this, waiting for a rider to, yes. to act, activate them. And I'm sorry, if you want your Uber drivers to be paid less than your fast food workers, who should all be paid more, but I'm like, who wants that? Like, like that's the state. That's what he won't say when he says like they uh, arrived at a rate that's unworkable for Uber and Lyft. It's like, well, that's because Uber and Lyft are crushing their drivers well he accidentally gives away the game and calls and basically admits that they're concedes the point that they're workers as opposed to just people doing this on the side for a little extra cash and i should say look i um i, I put that applause in it's deathly silent as he's saying this <laughs> yeah. it's really awkward and he almost seems to realize that it's awkward 
like maybe it was the first time he definitely had read what was on the script uh, in his script yeah. before but he he, he he it's almost like he hears himself saying out loud and maybe this like, doesn't oh, sound so good. i mean he look kind of looks like justin trudeau remember when trudeau tried to say ceasefire and like almost a ceasefire and like tripped over himself that's what this reminded me of we also need to consider the precedent that's being set here, which should not go overlooked entirely. Uh, and I'll just ask the rhetorical question of, are we now planning on setting a minimum wage for every industry that comes forward? Are we setting a new wage uh, with expenses for all tech workers, uh, for workers in the fast food industry, et cetera? Uh, you know, we have to be looking at the consequences of what we're doing here. We also. Wow. Wow. Is, yeah. It was, so what's the idea? He's afraid that uh, tech workers are going to get $15 a minimum uh, an hour or something like, like, what is it like? What, like that's literally the 80, the concept of the 85 plus year minimum wage that yeah. we've had in this country that yes, there is a minimum wage, but gig, yeah. gig workers have been, put into a different class so that companies can get around that and i'm sorry no in vita's politics the woman uh, emoting behind uh she's saying he has a good point when she reacts like that right. it's hard to read but he she's like yeah tell him oh really i i, I yeah, didn't know so. her politics so it no, seemed like she politics was, are horrible yeah we we have to consider the precedent that this could actually improve the lives of more than just the the drivers it could improve the lives of a lot of workers. And we just have to ask ourselves, is that something we want? Or do we want our drivers to be uh, worried about earning $11 an hour Look, or whatever? Folks, we are faced with a question. Do we want a race to the bottom or a race to the top? I think we probably want that race to the bottom, don't we? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and I saw Edward on on way. So make this point where like you can in some ways sympathize with some of these mayors who uh, are like afraid of capital flight to a degree from their cities. And this should be dealt with cl clearly at the federal level in order to crack down on some of these gig industries. This needs to be a federalized standard as opposed yes, to I think that's true. citywide. Um, but he is specifically horrible on this in ways that other mayors are not. And he went out of his way to circumvent his own own city council in order to make the people that live in minneapolis more insecure but, and have fewer uh, lower wages I, I i agree on that point about the federal uh, wages but you know particularly when you're talking about service uh you know industries here okay um the fact of the matter is is that uber and lyft can threaten to leave but the city could say you know what we're gonna do we're going to develop a, um, municipal, a, ride share. a municipal ride share. We'll take, uh, you know, X amount of, we don't need to make, make a profit. We just need the thing to pay for itself. We don't need to pay investors. We don't need to pay investors. We can just pay ourselves and we can pay these folks uh, a wage. Uh, you want to move your Wendy's out of town because uh, the wages are too high? There's going to be some other fast food restaurant that's going to come in and and deal with it like this you know the, the capital flight not as much of an issue particularly in the context of like these service industry jobs uh when you're talking about minimum wage but yes this obviously should be a federal minimum wage so you can't uh, play these games but a this mayor has the opportunity to say like you know what we're going to charge a one percent profit so we're gonna we're gonna and the city's going to get revenue from this and um like i mean there's definitely ways in which you could address this in a different uh manner uh but he didn't so yeah I, like i just think the the, prem the premise that you haven't like people are saying well what are you going to do you're going to break this system that people are relying on but i'm sorry if people are relying on drivers being paid under minimum wage to get them around places that's not a safe system i mean when i was in austin i took ubers everywhere because they don't have public transportation and two of the rides the, the guy's talking about oh i can't take that i don't want to take that trip because that's out in an area that's going to lose me money and it's like why the, who is this a pl pleasant experience for right i hope you gave him uh four stars i tip well oh, I, five stars every time um what's that I don't. I, I, I never give less than five. I always stars. forget to. Oh, I never get. But I mean, if the guy says I'm not going to take that trip out there. Oh no, he was complaining about one before I got it. Oh, okay. he's happy to pick me up.